we've been hearing about how to hear God. The last series we did was how to live like an ego. And increasingly, I find that people are going through circumstances that test our faith. You know, let me read a scripture to us in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1. Maybe this will bring it home. Just the early part of it that I need, but I will read this, the whole verse anyway. Say, wherefore, seeing we also are compassed. To be compassed means to be surrounded about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. The part I want us to look at today is the fact that we are not alone. We have surrounding us a batch, a cloud, a team of witnesses. Let me read the same part to us in the message translation. He said, do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blazed the way. All these veterans cheering us on. This morning as you are in church. Even when you are at home, when you are going through issues. That scripture says, when you are in deep waters. When you are in rivers of difficulties. There are a cloud of weaknesses. There are clouds of people Sharing you on to say, brother, show your faith and let your God be God. These are people who have tested, like Pastor Shegun said to us. They have tested the word of God and they found it to be true. They are saying the same way that a Ferguson in the days of his coaching will stay beside the, 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 the field and say to the team, play on brothers, win the cup, show that we are champions. The same way the heavens is cheering you on to not disappoint the power of God. Don't let the enemy feel as though God is not true. The God that Heaven's gift to us is a God that has been proven over and over again to be a true God. My prayer for you this morning is that you will experience this great move of God in your life in Jesus' name. This morning we want to share briefly and then we will pray about birthing your next level. This message will make a lot of sense to our women who have one time or the other given birth to a baby. I'll be making inferences to this area of life because it is pivotal. Um, when God directed me to share this over this weekend... It was a series we did over four Sundays. And this was the last part of it. This main series was, I can see something. How many of you, you look at your life and there's something in, in front of you. You almost think you want to touch it. But each time you stretch your hand forward to want to touch it, it seems as though it's a mirage. But in your mind, the thing is so real. It's true that that thing is there. But if I want to touch it, there's nothing to touch there. How, how many people has it happened to? You want to see, you see yourself. If it's a job, you can see yourself dressed up, walking into that office as though you were employed there. But there's no yet employment letter coming to you. You want to sit an exam, you can see yourself with the grades. But then, you haven't even sat the exam, talk less of having the results. You want to see, you, you see yourself expecting something to come your way. 
It seems as though the thing is coming in your mind. But in the reality, the thing is not there. Everything that needs existing needs to be birthed. This morning, you are going to give birth. Uh, some of you are not believing it. In, on this side, a few people, I mean, these people don't even hear it at all. But this morning, either you like it or yes, I'm announcing to you, you are pregnant. And you are going to give birth in this service. In the name of Jesus Christ. You're pregnant. Say to yourself, I'm pregnant. Oh, you're afraid. It's not a bad thing to be pregnant. It's what you are pregnant of that matters. What are you pregnant of? Good news. Somebody says everything. You don't want everything. It might just come what you don't want. But don't worry. We will decode all the decodables. In Jesus name. Let's, let's pick our scripture from 2 2 Kings 2. Let's pick our scripture from 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22. 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22. Those who are giggling are those who come on Wednesdays. If you don't come on Wednesday, you won't understand the gist. Amen. Let's open our scriptures to 2 Kings 2, 19 to 22. And then I read. And the man of the city said to Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation in this city is pleasant. As my Lord see it, but the waters, the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, bring me a new cruise and put salt therein. They brought it to him, and he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cast the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed Unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which he spake. Amen? There was a testimony by the men of this city. They called the man of God, they said, Elisha, listen. You can see for yourself that this city is a pleasant city. It's a city that is nicely positioned. They said to the man of God, you can see that there are opportunities in this city. You can see that I am well read. I've been to school. I have all that it takes to do well. In fact, I didn't just have the first degree. I have the second degree and I've done some professional exams. I am well qualified. You can see that I have a good physical nature. I should be married by now because I am a respectable, good bachelor. I'm good looking, the right height, right sizes. Everything just feels good. You know what? And I speak Queen's English. They said, you know... Out of everybody, if I look at it, time I come to church, if I look around, I seem to, I can credit myself to be one of the most beautiful girls in church. I'm just, oh, uh, just right. But then, they said to the man of God, all these things don't matter because there is a problem. The water in the city is bad. The water that runs through the city is causing everything that will have life to be dying. There's no growth. 
Every hope is always dashed. Every opportunity is being met with disappointment. Every step wanting to move forward is met with another tale of stories. They said to the man of God, this has been going on for a long time. We need you to do something. This morning, thank God that they went to the man of God. Because the man of God ministered to them by asking them to bring a new cruise with salt inside of it. And he took the salt in the new cruise to the source of the waters. And the Bible said he poured it there and the man of God didn't say, I have done it. He said, God spoke to the man of God. He says, I have healed these waters, now listen. It is easy to think the waters were healed by the salt. No. He said, I have healed these waters. The waters were healed by who? By God. It could have been sand in that new cruise. It could have been flour in that new cruise. By the fact that God ministered to that source of waters, he changed everything. Now, he didn't go to everywhere. He just went to the source of it. And it affected everything in the land. You, it will interest you to know that the oranges that comes from this part of the world where this story was casted is said to be the best sweetened oranges in the whole world. Why? Because the glory of the latter house shall be greater and mightier than that of the former. Amen? Your life, by the time God is finished with you, what will begin to happen in and around our lives, your life and my life, will be greater than what you have ever seen before in the name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because God is touching the source of everything in you today in Jesus' name. Nobody talks about giving birth except there is a pregnancy in place. There must be a pregnancy. Even when there is a pregnancy, midwives will tell you that for there to be a successful birth, everything must be okay at three levels. The three levels are the fact that the pregnant woman must be okay. Everything about her must be okay. Not just her, the baby in the womb must be okay. That's why they monitor the baby 24-7 at some point in time. If they think there's something going wrong, if they think the woman is not behaving rightly, medically, they put her under medication or under checks to know that she is okay because everything has to be all right. The third level that must be okay are the attendants at birth. Many a times we've seen situations where the woman was okay, the baby was okay, but the attendants were not okay. Something went wrong. The point of giving birth is the most difficult and crucial stage about your next level. You see, that point of giving birth is designed to be short. It's designed to be straight to the point. But if K is not taken and it is managed properly, things can easily go wrong. And it can go wrong so quickly and so rapidly that it can change the whole of history. When there is going to be a childbirth, there are four stages that allows for the baby to be given birth to successfully and without any stress. Number one, unfortunately, is pain. The women will tell you 
that when it is time for the baby to come, the first thing that announces that it's time for the baby to come is pain. You can be beside a pregnant woman and you eyes are just talking and chatting and doing everything. Then you just say, hey! Then something has happened. That pain is announcing the beginning of something new. The beginning of your next level. When that pain comes, what do you think? Some of us run away from that pain. When such pain comes in our lives, don't be quick to discard it. It might just be a pain you need to go through. It is not all pain that are bad pains. There are some pains that you need to go through to get to your next level. I've heard no pain, no what? No pain, no gain. There are some things that you must go through because the more you go through them, the stronger you become. It's like faith. Faith doesn't grow except you test it. The more you test your faith, the more your faith grows and becomes a mighty faith. Many of us will throw away all the opportunities to test our faith so every time in the school of faith, we are still babes. But now we should become old men in the school of faith. Old men that should be teaching all the other ones. Teaching some models. Teaching some curriculums. If you don't teach them, if you don't train yourself to learn them, they don't get to become part of you. And when that is announced, it is the opening process for the body to begin to allow for the baby to give way and to come. The second level, the second point is the point of pushing, which is signified by the delivery of the baby. You know, there's an energy that God has put in women. In childbirth. No, men don't have energy. You think you have strength? No. It's not all those muscles that you are showing off. They are nothing. Can that muscle give birth to a baby? No, it can't do anything. But when you see a woman, just on assuming, they went carrying babies in their womb, and then they gave back to the babies easy. By the next, by the next minute you are, you are talking to them, they are eating pounded yam. You are wondering, you that your tummy was this big in this, just this few minutes, the next thing you are eating, ah, that is how strong women are. The other day we saw a picture of a woman that gave birth to nine children at a time. When they showed her tummy and the scan of the babies in the womb, do you know, I felt goose pimples all over my body. I felt, ah, how is this possible? She gave back to all the nine, and they all survived. Nine. And it, not twice, once. When it's time to come through, you just see them, they just give a push. That push is not humanly done. It is divinely done. Divinely orchestrated because all the muscle in the body from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet is at work at that time. The one that is contracting is contracting. The one that is releasing is releasing. The one that is adjusting to make sure that the baby just slides out gently without any kind of confusion. All is happening all at sequence, all with synergy. Why? Because it is no man that is orchestrating, it is God. Everything comes through. Number three stage is the pool stage. The pool stage is after the baby has been delivered, the job is not yet finished. Because there is another thing that must be delivered. If it's not delivered, there's a problem. It's called the placenta. The delivery of the placenta after the baby has been given birth to 
if the placenta doesn't come through, by being pulled out, there's a problem. Is that a baby doesn't leave, or the mother doesn't leave, or the two of them doesn't leave? The last stage is the praise stage, where the baby is being given birth to. The placenta is being done away with, and then we welcome the baby. What happened at that stage is also very crucial. Because some people, they see the thing, they see the baby, and then something else takes place. In here, it's been diagnosed as post, is it postnatal? Postnatal syndrome. And some people, you see some ladies have the baby, the baby they've been asking that they want to have, and then they have the baby and they hate the baby. Seen women that have a baby and carry the baby the next day. I want to throw the baby away. Why? There's something that went wrong. Looking through all these stages we're talking about, you may not be a woman, but you are carrying a dream inside of you. You are carrying a goal. You're carrying a desire. You're carrying something that you feel is your future. In the same way that we've talked through these four stages, the same way these stages have to happen in you. For you to see that joy come to pass in your life. There's no joy as a joy of a childbirth. When you see a woman who's been pregnant carry their baby, you see the baby, you see the mother, you see the father, and they're all just joyous. It could have easily gone wrong, but for God. Today, I prophesy over you. I decree over you that as you begin to see the manifestation of God in birthing the next phase of your life, Whatever that next phase is, according to God's promises, nothing will be held back for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Heaven will move for you where necessary. The anointing of God will come upon you where necessary. And it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Number one thing that we want to pray about, and once we will do this very quickly, I want us to just pray. The first thing to pray about is for you to make up your mind that you are carrying something. There are people who don't know that they are carrying something. They don't even know. Everybody can see them that this one is pregnant. Doesn't it happen? You see a woman walking around. You say, ah, auntie, there's something that is just... You say, what is it? There's nothing. There's No, there's something. What is it? You say, ah, ah. The way you are looking, mm. you are, have you seen your doctor lately? So no, I haven't seen your doctor. You better ask you and see your doctor. There's something happening. They go there. They say they are 24 months pregnant. 24 weeks. <laughs> oh, you think it's so far? No, it happens. The soldier that went to Afghanistan, she was how many months pregnant? She was near giving birth. She didn't even have a clue. She was still carrying gun, killing people around. Until it called her back home to say, you are almost going to have a baby. She was still there. The baby was hiding somewhere in her. Almost full grown. You need to make up your mind this morning. Everybody looking at you knows that you are carrying a destiny. Everybody looking at you knows that there's something good about to happen around you, but only you doesn't seem to know about it. This morning, your eyes of understanding. This morning, your eyes of destiny. This, I mean, this morning, the glory of God will shine over you to reveal the deep things of heaven unto you in the name of Jesus Christ. Others can see it, only you cannot see it. What is our prayer? Oh God, 
open my eyes to see my next level. Open my eyes to see, to focus on my destiny. Open my eyes to see. Not just to see, oh God, I know if I see it, you will sustain it. Are we ready to pray? Let's rise up and pray. If you don't want to pray, you can go to the toilet at this time. But I can assure you, you need to pray this prayer. Ask God. You know, one day, Jabez had this feeling about his next level. He said, I can see this next level, but it's not coming to me. Everybody around him even said, there's no next level because they call him sorrow. He doesn't mind whatever they call him. He decided one day that I'm going to go to God. And I'm going to ask of him, show me this next level. If you don't show me, don't get me out of here. Why not ask God today and say, God, I want to be able to see this next level. This next level that is already in me. That everybody can see that your promises say it's possible. Help me to see it, oh God, and help me to sustain it. Let us pray in the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the God that we serve is no respecter of persons. If he has done for one, he will do for the other. Whatever it is your desire today, you want to hear God, ask God, speak to me about the things that will satisfy my passion. Speak to me about the things that will satisfy my desire. Let me see that next level, oh God. Father, King of glory, I ask of you, in the same way that you answered Jabez, and you gave him a dream, you gave him a new anointing, Father, grant unto me today, oh God, the opportunity, the joy of a next level. Help me to see my next level. Father God, as you open my eyes to see my next level, oh God, sustain this next level for me. Because this next level is in your hand, oh God. Father God, I ask of you, concerning my dreams, concerning my goals, concerning my desire, Father, they are all in your hands. Father God, wrap me, oh Lord, in your arms of grace. Wrap me, oh Lord, in your hands of joy. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody today, you are praying not about a child, you are praying about a business. For some people, it is a child you are praying for. For some people, you are not praying about a child, you are praying about your home. You are not just praying about a marriage. I stop, I've stopped just agreeing with people about a marriage. Pastor, I want to get married. Why do you want to get married? Why? Why do you want to get married? The Bible says you don't have to get married. You want to get married because you want to have a home that will glorify God. Every intent of your heart that will glorify God, the Lord God is answering you today in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, the only reason for getting to the point of birth is because there has been no abortion or no miscarriage. The reason for wanting to give birth is because there has been a pregnancy that lasted all terms. I want to decree this morning. I decree against every abortion. I decree, ev I, I de listen, I decree against the effect of every bad water. In the name of Jesus. Every water that wants to, that I want to affect the pregnancy and the dreams and the joy of my life. I come against them in by the fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we just pray? I come against every attempt. Every attempt. Every attempt. Every attempt to militate against the plan of God for my life. In the name of Jesus I ask of you, O oh God. I decree against all such in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be well with me, O oh God. There shall be no abortion. There shall be no miscarriage in the name of Jesus. I will move from one level to the other. 
in the name of Jesus. The transition will be smooth in the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. We bless you, O oh God. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Number three. For a successful time and birth of a baby, there are some things that must give way. You understand? When it's time for the baby to come, one of the first things that give way is the water. The water broke. Imagine if somebody said, no, no, I don't want that water to break. No, that means you don't want the baby. The water must break. Not just the water, there's some blood that must pass away. Release them to go. If this must happen in you, you know, we have an example of that, Elijah. In, in, in 1 Kings 18.40, he says, seize all the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one of them escape. So the people seized them all. And Elijah took them down to the Kishon Valley and killed them there. Anything that must affect or that can affect your dreams, affect your goal, affect your desire, affect the plans of God for your life, they must be terminated. Listen. That goal may not come to pass unless some things die. That goal that you are expecting to happen, that joy that you want to see happen, they may not come because there must be an exchange. Some things must die for those things to gain life. So Elijah knew this. He commanded the the, the prophets of Baal, all of them to go and be tied up and killed. When they were terminated, of course, life came into them. Isaiah 49, 25 says, But the Lord said, The captives of warrior will be released, and the plunder of the tyrants will be retrieved. For I will fight, I will fight those who fight you, and I will save your children. I want you to ask God today. Every contending waters. Against my dream. Against my purpose. Against the plan of God for my life. Every bare prophet. That is coming against me in whatever form. In their human form. In their material form. In their financial form. Today I ask of you. According to your promise, contend with them, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Father, you promise that you will contend with them that contend against me. You will contend with them that contend against my purpose. I ask of you today, because you have promised, every force that is struggling against my future, that is struggling against my next level. That is struggling against my purpose in you. Father, I command them today, oh God. Let them be terminated by your anointing. Let them be terminated, oh God, by your strength, oh Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Shembra Haka Yekeliandi. Aliba Yeke, Lige Gogo Solo Liandi. Oh, Baba Baba Shingre Teba Yekeliandu. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. All those things that are affecting you. All those contrary things that we are talking about. There's something that is foiling their power. What Elijah went to minister to at the source was that strength that is, that is strengthening that bad water. Allowing it to bring out sorrow. You're going to pray and ask that every force that is militating against your purpose let their strength today be expired by God in the name of Jesus. Let me explain this. Let, it, let me explain this prayer to you. If you want to start a business if what is struggling with you is finding, I mean finance, for example 
If finding finance, because that finance is, is existing somewhere, just like it's not coming to you. Whatever the force that is making it not to come your way, that force will be sucked up, will be terminated and destroyed so that it can release a passage of funds to you. For some of you, it's just somebody that's just standing in the way. I said, no, you can't get it. Promotion, no, it's not, not, not for you. For such people, their anointing, their strength, their abilities are withdrawn from them. As you pray this prayer, there's something happening that is for your purpose. In the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we just pray in Jesus' name? I'm asking of you, oh God, that because we can trust in you, because we can rely on you, because you are our God, oh Lord, because you are the one we can run to, every force, every force ministering that is militating against your people, let their power expire right now. Let their power, oh God, be sucked dry in the name of Jesus. Father God, we ask, oh God, release your anointing upon us. Release your favors upon us, oh God. Give us a new strength. Give us a new power. Give us a new anointing in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I want us to pray for grace. We said earlier on that there are some pains you may necessarily go through. Those pains don't allow the devil to make you feel, eh? If that pain comes, you're dead. If you, if you listen to such gospel, then that is finished. The devil is one. Let the pain come. The Bible says, when you are in the valley of the valley of the shadow of death, it says what? It says, I will be with you there. I will be with you there. The fact that the devil has robbed us because of fear. Say with me, I shall not be afraid. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The God you serve is greater than that force. Don't allow anything to make you afraid. He says, when you fall down, he says, I will make sure that there are angels that come to grab you before you dash your foot. So why are you afraid? Be confident, be bold. I want you to pray and say, God, give me grace. In Proverbs 3, 34, he says, surely he scorned the scorners, but he gives grace to the lowly. We are lowly because we serve God. We are humble because we serve our God. In, 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 in Zechariah 10, I mean 12, 10, he says, I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitant of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. Say with me today, I'm releasing, I'm receiving from God the anointing and the spirit of grace to go through every necessary pain that will allow for my destiny to come through in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Father, give me the anointing. The anointing to stay. The anointing not to give up. The anointing not to be tired. The anointing not to be weary. The anointing not to be bamboozled in the name of Jesus. The anointing not to be bewildered in the name of Jesus. I have the anointing of God in me. I have the grace of God in me. I have the power of God in me. I have the, the strength of God in me. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says I can do all things. I can do all things. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. In the name of Jesus. Yes. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 2 Corinthians says, 2 Corinthians 6 1 says, We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. When this grace you have prayed for comes upon you, say with me, I will not receive it in vain. 
if you if the test comes and you receive you refuse to exercise the authority and the faith of God, then you have received the faith of God in vain. In vain. You have received the grace of God in vain. If the next time you have a headache and you cannot stand up boldly and say, I rebuke you the spirit of headache to come out of me right now in Jesus' name, then you have received the grace of God in vain. If somebody talk about your God anyhow and you cannot boldly look them in the face and say, you know what? I serve a God that is bigger than you and that will surprise you. Then you have received the grace of God in vain. I want you to pray and say, God, I will be courageous not to receive your grace in vain. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive the confidence to declare the mighty name of God. I receive the confidence to exercise the authority of God. <laughs> Oh, mama, ma sengre te ba ye keli go. Oh, baba, shi grata ba ye keli ando. Oh, lima segele go sonro ko ba ye. E lima ma segele te ba ye ge. Oh, lima shada ye keli ando. Oh, lige ge 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 sada ye keli ando. Imba sandre ke ba ye ke. Oh, la sarabata ye. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I heard the story of three boys. I mean, three children who were talking. And one said, my dad, my dad, I think I read it in the, in the op, um, maybe, yeah, yeah, um, what's it called? The, 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 the daily guide, it's whatever it is. And the, the, one of them was saying, my, my dad knows the president. And the other one says, my dad knows the prime minister, something like that. The third one confidently said, you know what? My dad knows God. If you cannot say that, then you are, you are ashamed to God. You want to say to yourself, I will be confident to declare the name of my God. Wherever I go, the authority and mandate of God will rest upon me in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Confidence, confidence, confidence of God. The courage of God. The anointing of God comes upon me. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Three more prayers and then we are done. One more, number five. For the pregnancy to be smooth and easy, it's always better for the baby to be formed fully. The best time to have a baby is at nine months. When the baby is fully formed. The, bone, the bones are grown. The lungs are grown. Everything is in place. When it is delicate and they have to be saying, no, don't do this. And then, no, 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 no. It is too delicate. I want you to pray and say, God, my dream and my purpose will not hatch prematurely. Did you hear that prayer? They will be, they will come at full time. Nothing will be able to hinder them. The waters will not come against them. They will not come too quick. They will not come too late. In the name of Jesus. Father God, let my purpose, let my dreams, let my, let, let, let my desires, oh God, be fully formed in you. In the name of Jesus. You are the giver of all things. Father God, the Bible says when you give anything, oh God, you do not put any sorrows with them. Father, let my purpose, let my dreams, let my grace, let my goals form into fullness in the name of Jesus. They will be fully formed. They will not hurt prematurely in the name of Jesus. It shall be well with me, O oh God. Father God, we thank you. Father, we bless you. We honor you, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. I want you to pray for help. There are times when you need help. You know, help comes when everything around you that you don't have control over work perfectly for you. A woman that wants to have a baby, you, don't, you cannot control the person that will be on duty when you are going to go to the hospital. You can't control it. It is whatever you have, you get. You cannot control, because you don't know the day you are going to have the baby, you can't control the fact that you want this particular nurse to be on duty. 
Because you are used to them. No, the rota fix that. That's why some people today, they are opting to have control over when they have their baby. They are doing um, caesarean, CS, more than just having it natural because they want everything to be natural. They want everything to be in place. They want to be in control of it. They don't want to have a baby on a Saturday morning when everybody is half drunk. They want to have it on a Tuesday morning when they have finished the hangover and then they are ready to walk. But you can pray. In Isaiah 45, 1, he says, Thus says the Lord to his anointed. God is speaking to you. Say, I'm an anointed of God. So God is speaking to me. The way he spoke to Cyrus. The Lord said to Cyrus, his anointed, Whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. He says, I will loosen the loins of kings to open before him the two living gates and the gate shall not be shut. The gate of your promotion, the gate of your success, the gate of your next level shall not be shut against you in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray and say, God, loosen the loins of kings for me. Loosen the loins of kings to favor me. Loosen the loins of kings to work for me. Loosen the loins of kings to be at my assistance in the name of Jesus. Let help arise for me when I need the help in the name of Jesus. Let help from the south, not from the help from the north, from the east, from the west. Let them come for me, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Mama Maseke Goroto Baya Himbali Karende Boshe Kredi Baya Holy Marekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekekek
from his pastor. Who is having responsibility over him from today? I want us to look at this so that we do not get many more young people into problems. I am asking that we release this boy so that he can continue to make progress in life and not be thrown into jail and begin to go down the drain. That was how that boy went home with me from the case. When God, when God losing the loins of kings for you, you know, what you cannot imagine that could happen, will happen for you. When God losing the loins of kings for you, the help that you cannot in your wildest dream think can happen for you, God will arise it to happen. Angels will work for you. Anointing will work for you. Pray, pray and say, God, let the loins of kings begin to work in my favor. From today, in the name of Jesus, the loins of kings work for me. Work for me in the name of Jesus. Work for me in the morning. Work for me at noon time. Work for me in the evening. In the name of Jesus. Reba basendeliando. Legeriando bo singariakaya. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Number seven and the last one. Everything that has tied you or held you up. I want you to pray that they will hear the voice of God. When some things hold you are holding you back, all they need to do is to hear what will make them release you. Because you have energy to run. You have energy to do anything you want to do. But they're just holding you. You know, it's like, look at this, this, this microphone. The way I'm holding it. If I release it, it has the power to go back. But all that is holding it from going back is this hand that is holding it. When this hand can hear the voice of God, that is what J um, J um, God told, spoke to Moses. He said, go and say to, Moses, um, to, to Pharaoh, that he should let my people go. That they may serve me. Today you are going to ask. Let the anointing of heaven. Let the strength of heaven. Make every force that have tied me. Or held me. To hear the voice of God. That they may let me go to serve my God. To may let me go to go and fulfill the purpose of God for my life. In the name of Jesus. Declare, let me go to serve my God. Let me go to serve my God. I command you to let me go to serve my God. I decree to let me go to serve my God. Let my people go, the Bible says. That they may serve me. That they may rejoice in me. That it shall be well with me, O God. Reba jetelembo lotobaya. I'm going in the name of Jesus. I'm going in the anointing of God. I'm going in the grace of God. I'm going in the power of God. I'm going in the might of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your name. Father, we give you praise. We magnify you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Let me just pray for us. I want you to just open, your, open up your ears and listen to God as he release his power over you. Father God, we are asking you today because we can trust you. We focus on you today because we are your disciples. Through us, generations to come, we know that we served you. The same way that we have read of the men of old, how they served you and they prosper in serving you. Father, today, oh God, we ask in the name of Jesus, Concerning every life that is here. Your purpose and desire for us is to fulfill our calling for you. You desire for us to live 
and show forth your glory all the days of our lives. But we are not unmindful of forces of the kingdom of darkness that wants to rob us. That is robbing us. That is determined to stop us. But we know that in the same way that stones did not stop Jesus from rising from the dead into life, that is the same way that we declare today every force that has been arranged against us, that has been positioned against us, that has been made to stand against us hitherto, we command them, O oh God, under this anointing, to lose their grip of us in the name of Jesus. Father God, we command because you have said so. The Bible says with God, nothing shall be impossible. The Bible also said, as we read today, that Elijah ministered to the source of that water. And that water became sweetened to today. Father God, the anointing to sweeten our lives. The anointing to turn things around. The anointing that comes suddenly. Let it come upon your people right now. In the name of Jesus. When the anointing has come, and something has happened. There's always the manifestation. Father, we do not want to wait for too long. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says immediately the water turns sweet. Father God, we ask of you. Let the situations in and around us begin to turn around right now. In the name of Jesus. Today, let the testimony abound. Tonight, let the testimony abound. In the night, let the testimony abound. By tomorrow morning, let the testimony abound. In this week, let the testimony abound. Father, in this month, oh God, let the testimony abound, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In this year, the year of our significance, let this testimony abound, oh God, that you have done us good. In the name of Jesus, this year of signs and wonders, let there be a moving forward for us. In the name of Jesus. Father, we promise one thing. We ask you to do it so that no man can take your glory. No man will be able to say, I am the one that helped you. We promise to return the glory 100%. To you and you alone, the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's put our